Welcome to this week's video. In this week's news episode, we're going to be looking at the new Mercedes EQC, what I think about it, the specs, what it's got, and what I find interesting, and what I think Mercedes are doing wrong. Also, some news about EVs and how many have been sold. Next level. Now, before we get into the Mercedes news, if you are interested in electric cars and you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button. There's a little picture of my face on the bottom right hand side of this video. Click that, that'll subscribe to me. If you're already a subscriber, scroll under the video, there's a little bell icon. Click that and that will be notified you every time I make a new video. Now, Mercedes launched their new EQC, which is the first Mercedes car to have the Mercedes badge on it. It's obviously not Mercedes' first electric car. They're producing the smart car, electric, quite a couple, a couple of number of years now. But it's the first one to actually get the Mercedes brand, the Mercedes badge, their premium badge on a, an electric SUV, electric car of any sort, the Mercedes car. Developed specifically for the EQC. The first Mercedes-Benz of the product and technology brand, EQ. It was hosted by the Monopoly Man. Not really. <laughs> he looks like the Monopoly Man in my mind. He's called Deitzer Zetschu. I can't say his name, I'm sorry to anyone I might have offended, but I'll put his name at the bottom of the screen somewhere here. But... It was hosted by him, he launched the car to a really, really, really overly long intro about Mercedes history. Uh, he also talked about how Mercedes are going to now produce an electric EV bus, fully electric EV bus. And then he went on to the big fanfare of unveiling the car. Now the Premier took part in Stockholm, which is also where Mercedes have been testing it. They've been testing it in Lapland... <laughs> the coldest extreme weather test they can possibly get. Uh, they talked about how the car was all Swedish um, inspired, the design, the comfort inside. It, it was much more about the Swedes really than the, the German brand behind Mercedes. Swedish architecture generally is all about a clean and clear appearance on the outside and lots of warm and natural materials. They seem the to be really saying that if you can cope with these tough winter conditions over there, it can pretty much cope anywhere, which is quite interesting, uh, but we'll see how that car unveils when it actually gets some real world road testing. Now, a couple of caveats to take away from this new Mercedes. The GQ is the what branding Mercedes are going to put all their electric cars under. So anything with GQ will be an electric Mercedes. And then the letter afterwards will be the derivative, like the C-Class, the A-Class, the B-Class. So, But this one's actually called the EQC, which is an SUV. It's loosely based on the GLC. If you look at it, it looks a bit like the GLC. So it's loosely based on the GLC. Quite a nice looking car. It's got some Audi... S3, S4 looks to it, it's got some eye pace in it, uh, hasn't really got much Tesla design language in it, it seems to be a, a bit of a hybrid between most German looking SUV cars. Some of the caveats I can take out of the speech that you might be interested in, it, they are doing it in a couple of specifications, they're doing like a normal trim line and then Mercedes famous AMG line which will obviously have large sporty wheels, more sporty styling bumpers and rear bumpers, side steps and a little bit of extra tweaking on the chrome. The grille at the front is obviously completely flat, it's still got the Mercedes look to it, it's a piece of acrylic and then it's got the Mercedes chrome pieces in inside it but there's no actual grill it's flat piece of uh, acrylic over the front they've also got this weird light that seems to go straight across so the daytime running light you've got them in the lights and then it seems to come straight across into the middle there's also talk that the mercedes logo emblem in the middle will also have daylight running lights in them depending on your country so it's very unlikely to be in uh, the UK, some of your European countries, um, probably not in the USA, but maybe Dubai and other countries like that, that the Mercedes emblem will be lit up as part of the daytime running lights, which will be pretty cool to see. Now the back of the Mercedes on the demo video was sporting the 4Matic badge, which obviously indicates that it's going to be a four-wheel drive transmission system, so we're going to have full four-wheel drive. The EQC has an electric drive unit on the front axle and another on the rear axle. 
the two electric motors, the two-stage, one-speed transmission, including a differential, casing and cooler, the battery at the bottom of the vehicle. It's also got a Mercedes predicted range of 400 kilometers, which converts to 248 miles. Now, this is obviously not real-world driving. I think this will be WLTP, because obviously it's after September, so they would have had to have announced WLTP. Uh, so judging on that real world driving is probably 200 mile range. The predicted price is probably going to be around £60,000 which is slightly cheaper than the Jaguar I-Pace and obviously quite a lot cheaper than the Model X. But with 200 mile possible range for a car that's not due out for a couple of years, I think they're going to be left fairly behind the market. That seems like a very small battery option to put in. If that is just the base model battery and they're going to be options to upgrade to a higher battery, that's great, but there's nothing been announced on that. To be fair, on the adverts, it does say over 400 kilometers range, so whether Mercedes are waiting for a big unveil of showing more battery specs, I, I don't think they will. I think it was more like they'd do it under this big caveat unveil to really blow uh, everything away, but... 200 mile range for me on a big SUV competing with a Tesla and an I-Pace. It seems a very, 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 very low range. But as I know myself, most people will probably never even need over a 100 mile range. Obviously my Renault Zoe in the winter only does about 65, 70 and in the summer it only does about 85, 90 miles. So 200 miles, yes, is a lot, but for most people who will buy an SUV, they're probably wanting 250 real world mile driving range. The boot at the back appears to be quite a bit smaller than the I-Pace as well. So whether that will play into the I-Pace and Jaguar market, but as I just said, it's likely to have a smaller price entry point than the I-Pace. So that should pick it up for Mercedes. Hey Mercedes, please have my car ready for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And in other exciting EV news, it took five years to sell the first million electric vehicles. However, this year alone, in the first six months, a million electric cars have been sold. That goes to show that the uptake of electric vehicles is huge. The growth market is massive. Anyone who doesn't think electric vehicles are happening now, are the future, need to wake up and look at the uptake and statistics of these the vehicles of electric cars. I'll link to the article down below. It's a really interesting read. Fully recommend that you have a look. Even if you've already got an EV, it's a really interesting article to have a look at. Thanks very much for watching this week's video. Consider supporting me on Patreon for little as a coffee a month. Don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't already and check out my other videos down here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.